I'm all sugar ale, baby. Let's go. I'm ready for you. My name is John Donnelly, host of The Big Dill. Pickleball has changed my life. It has created an incredible world of new healthy purpose, but most importantly, new friends. Pickling is a priority in my life. The Big Dill is our attempt at sharing these experiences from around the United States with all of our friends. Please join us in our journey to the coveted Golden Paddle. We've been playing for about eight months now. We met on a date nap, actually, and I had just been introduced to pickleball like two days before. So I, I talked with my friend in Florida, yeah. and then she's like, hey, do you know about pickleball? I'm like, no, what it is, it sounds like food. Sounds good to me. You want to go first? You're going first. No, you go first. Oh, man, you're so fast the all the time. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay. So, and then I go and I start um, just watching and I'm standing there and it just took maybe like three minutes of just standing there before someone was like, hey, you want to play? Pickleball community is just fun, yeah. fun people. We are Team Connolly. The last okay. time she signed me up for a surfing contest. I did it in without his permission. But, and didn't tell me. Well, and I, I ended up taking the bronze. All right. Yeah. Thank you for your gentleness. Yeah. All right. So we came with Sweet Pickle today. Sweet Pickle. We uh, have a fan club of like 75 year old women. There All are, right. There are Sweet Pickles. Listen. I'm just going to tell you, I am not quiet on the court. I, I'm telling people, look, say your prayers, because I'm coming, OK? No, we just came up with it today, and we're going to call them that from now on. So figure that's the best way to go. got the order in yeah. for t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of them are here, so it's I good love to see it. them. I see love them right there. It. I'm retired. I'm there to have fun. And, and you ask how, how many days we play? I try to play every single day. Oh, do I have to hold this? Oh, no. snap. Like, we travel for tournaments. Yeah. We play the Arizona, Utah, California, Nevada right now, mostly West Coast stuff. Yeah. I literally drove in from Palm Springs today, yeah. like on that traffic to get here, and I was playing pickleball in Palm Springs because you can like play it anywhere. Then it got a little, oh. <clears throat> Give it the whole spiel. Okay. Ball breakers. Good. Ball and that we do. No. Well, because, uh, you know, in Italian it says non rompere le palle, it means don't break my balls. <laughs> It'll be a pain in the... Welcome to the Big Deal. We've spent the last two months in the Vegas pickleball community, and it's been such a rewarding experience for both of us. The community, the people, the play has been outstanding. The culmination of that is over the next couple days, we're gonna figure out who the best team is to win the Golden Pop. Right? And what I'd like to do is have Mike share with you what's going to happen over the next couple days and set some expectations. Thank you, John. Yeah. So what we've done here is we've gathered together everyone through a casting call process and we've decided that 20 teams will participate in a tournament that's qualifying to get to four teams. And with that said, I've got the pairings here for the four flights that will arrive at our four finalist teams to make it to the Big Deal House yeah. here at yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, open your envelopes! Let's go! Here your glasses. Team Cha Cha, you've seen the pairings. Tell us how you feel about your chances for tomorrow in the big match. 
What I feel think? good. I feel great. Excited. Look forward to it. So for tonight, we go straight to bed. Are you going to go out tonight in the town? Are you going to go out and... Is there a curfew? I think I have to rest until tomorrow I have a competition. So tell me, you've seen the brackets for tomorrow. Wow, I feel like it was rigged. Um, it's, not, it's, it's not fair to the other guys, like, at this point, right? But, I mean, you guys did us a favor, and, like, we appreciate it. Like, yeah. So coming in, like, we feel really confident and, like... We'll take care of business. Confidence. You see that? I mean, how do you feel? What, tell me about it. I feel great. Like, we'll see what happens. Ty's going to do all the work. So I'm just going to stand there. It's going to be competitive. Jen, it's, it's pickleball. It's yeah. pickleball, not kickball. I mean, do yeah. comments? Yeah. No, competition is great. We rise to the occasion. We're the tallest. Not like the so. sun, like the sun rising? What do you mean? No, we're tall. What do you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you yes. guys are tall. You yes. are the tallest yes. people, yes. Yes. So we will be at the line, ready to roll, ready for the competition. Yep. Ready to roll. Okay, got it. Yeah. Some of the feedback from the teams has been, you guys are one of the favorites, and really? folks are nervous about playing you, and you know, hoping that they don't see you till the end. How do you feel about that being one of the favorites? Well, well, see, that puts pressure. pressure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it puts a lot of pressure. I, I didn't feel that way. Um, actually, I think there's uh, teams with two guys, and we'd be a mixed doubles. And we know them well, yes. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so usually, what happens in mixed doubles, the they usually hit it to the girl a lot. Yeah, target. Yeah. So that's advantage them. But so when there's two guys, you don't know who to hit it to. That's yeah. so. Yeah. So tomorrow's the big day. Yeah. Qualifying tournament begins down at sunset. However, we did get a bit of news today about the weather. We're expecting wind gusts up to 50 miles an hour during tournament time. Yeah, which Vegas is known for their windstorms, but also their sandstorms. So fingers crossed that we don't get a sandstorm tomorrow and everything will be perfect. Hey there, picklers. I'm with Jim Rhodes, who's one of the uh, all-time greats here in Las Vegas pickleball lore. Uh, if you want to give us a little background on yourself and tell us about pickleball in Las Vegas over the last decade. Okay, well, I've been playing pickleball now for at least nine years, and pickleball has been a total replacement for tennis. I love the game, and I'll never play another sport other than pickleball. Awesome. And when you when you initially would go out and look for games to play, how would you find a good court with great, great picklers? What I would do initially was get on the computer, find out where a place, a uh, park was at the head pickleball. Then I would drive to that neighborhood, roll the windows down in my car and listen for the sound of the ball bouncing off of paddles. <laughs> like I said, I love the game. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks, Jim Rhodes. A lot of players here credit you with bringing them on to the court, so we are pre very appreciative of that. Thank you. You're quite welcome. You're Fred. quite welcome. Thank you. Hi, this is John Donnelly, host of The Big Deal. Today, I'd like to welcome my partner, Gabe Lopez. Gabe is a stand-up comedian and also the founder of the world-famous Dirty at 1230. Welcome aboard, Gabe. Thanks, John. I am so excited to be here, but I have no idea what's going on. I've just learned about this term, pickleball. Apparently it's a sport. We're gonna find out together, but I'm really excited. Let's get pickling. Let's do it. Welcome everybody to the Big Deal Las Vegas. I'm Don, I'm gonna be the head referee today. Now actually behind me, we've got referees Vonette, Kimberly, and then over here we have Selena and Jeannie, and directly behind me pretty much is Steve and Joan who are gonna be our court monitors. So Gabe, today we're gonna to embark on our qualifying tournament. We'll start with 20 teams and narrow it down to four. 
all of the participants in the tournament will be between a three and a four O in pickleball terms. So three to a four, when do the beautiful people show up? Well, actually it's not about beauty, it's uh, about skill. Oh, my apologies. So Gabe, how's that jacket feel? Do you think I need to bring a tailor in to... Uh... I don't understand why you picked two different colors. Two different colors? What are you talking about? Dude, are you colorblind? These are two different colors. You have a classy green, I got highlighter green. I'm not seeing it, Gabe. I'm not seeing it. This is bullshit. All right. So the action started. Uh, we have two of the, uh, I would call them the favorites of the tournament, matched up in the first round, which is the, the folks over at Team Conley and Nazy Nation. And as you can tell, these are premier athletes. Good big by John and a line out there. Now here comes the serve, good return. Now what we're looking for a-, a oh, just throwing relish there, John, just throwing relish. <laughs> so Nazy Nation, oh, that was a close call. Wow, they, they were, that they, almost hit him. Is there a term for this big wiffle ball? Is, is it called something it's else? It's just a pickleball. Oh, it's called That's a pickleball. It. It's actually called a pickleball. It is, it is. Well, for those of you at home that don't know what that, it looks like a softball sized wiffle ball. Gabe, we're on to match six. I'm the, so excited, buddy. The tournament's moving quickly. The ass-kicking pickles are having a ton of success and are up against uh, the Stingers who are playing in their first match. Is it true that's uh, ass-kicking pickles? I thought we were at the ass-kickers. Well, it could be. The Stingers, however, their reputation is that they're hard hitters and that they charge the net on occasion. Got it, so uh, we're, we're, we should expect some, uh, some pickle spears we should. going on through this. We should. Very, t very good technically on, on their uh, kitchen work. Well, that's an unforced error. Here comes the serve and good return as they force it back to back. Oh, another unforced error. You can tell that the wind is playing havoc to the game today. Well, winds are still maintaining at 50 miles an hour oh, today. Oh, good hit there. You could tell that the, the teams are trying to keep the ball low because of the wind, which is actually all, everything you want to do about pickleball is trying to keep the ball low, as close to the net as possible. They appear to be playing pretty conservatively right now. They are. Here comes a big hit. Oh, and an unforced error. Frustrating. Looks like the uh, ass-kicking pickles are about to get stung. Good volley, good volley. That close contact volley can sometimes uh, be a little dangerous if you're on the receiving end of a body shot. Yeah. Or as we call it in pickleball, a tattoo. Yeah. Oh, is that what it's called? Oh, that does make sense. That does make sense. This is John Donnelly down at the courts. I'm witnessing a, a protest over the use of the courts by the pickleball players. So Steve, have you ever tried pickleball before? You know, I tried this a couple times, but it's just too slow. It's like for old people here, little kids. This game is for, for sissies. So Lucius, we're down at the court here, and you know, why can't we just get along with the pickleball players and create a camaraderie and you know, you know, just share the courts? It's called Wimbledon, okay, not wiffle ball. Us serious athletes are out here every morning working really hard and we don't have as many courts. All you hear is dink, 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 dink back and forth from the neighbors here. And it just causes a lot of disruption. I feel like people don't take our sport as seriously anymore. And it's just a disturbance. 
I've been playing tennis, good old tennis, for 60 years. I still have my original racket and love it. Our court's four times bigger than this dinky little thing right here. They have a thing they call a kitchen. A kitchen belongs in a house, not on a sports court. The net's short. They play with a ping pong paddle. They have whiffle balls, for God's sake. So, Faith, there's quite a few people down here today protesting pickleball. Uh, why are you here today? I don't really know, other than the fact that my mom made me come, but I, I, I'm not really into all this stuff. This is John Donnelly signing off down at the pickleball courts. Tennis courts! Look at that! So Tom has a, the standard drop serve, and he can pretty much score from anywhere in the court. Um, as Team Stinger just nails that uh, high ball down. Here comes the serve. Great serve in the wind. Wind, still oh, a factor in this. It is. It's really play, it's playing havoc with the teams that weren't prepared for it and are trying to play their standard game. As you can see, some of the players are looking up at the flags to determine where the wind is coming from. And we have a long serve. So another unforced error. Unforced errors is going to be the term of the day. That I seems to be the make or break of these matches. Definitely. Definitely. And just definitely looking up at the flags definitely becomes a strategy. I didn't realize that until you said that right now. So Team Stinger is uh, adjusting uh, their game here. Uh, Tom and Suzanne, um, Team Ball Breaker, are getting ready. Here comes Suzanne's serve. Good return. Push. Oh, unforced error. And Tom's knees are getting a little wobbly there. <laughs> I did see them wobble. Good return. Good second shot. Here comes Tom. Ginger's return. Tom comes across. And uh, we recall that motion that um, Tom did poaching. Got it. So he took the ball from Suzanne. Uh, that's a poaching move. Got it. Not illegal, is it? It's not illegal, but it could, could result in some in relationship issues down yeah. the road. Yeah. The divorce is eminent. You can tell by their style of play. So Gabe, we have the Ass Kicking Pickles and American Pride. Got it. Both are very competitive teams, and as you can see, uh, the competition's getting better and better as we go through the tournament. And American Pride is looking quite patriotic. They are. They actually travel the world, Lori and Ty, playing pickleball and representing the United States, and been quite successful in winning a lot of tournaments overseas in South America and Europe. That's wonderful. I forgot, is it Ty over on American Pride? That's right. That, is a, that is a specimen of a man there. He's, a, he's an excellent athlete, and he's, he's done uh, multiple other sports. I'm reading in my notes here that the, the team, American Pride, uh, they met together uh, because of a Tinder date. That's right. That's right. And, and what could been, go wrong uh, there? They've been pickling ever since. <laughs> so here we go to match point. Our referee is signaled. And good return. Oh, unforced error. Good match as uh, the folks over at... Uh, Ass kicking pickles moves on. Gabe, we've had an action packed day with all kinds of great teams, players, great points. We're, we're coming to an end here. We've got um, two really high quality teams in uh, Sweet Pickle and our friends over at Not Tonight. Sweet Pickle. How does one come up with the name Sweet Pickle? The, the guys at Sweet Pickle have a uh, fan club, and it's uh, represented by uh, a bunch of women over the age of 75 that follow them and go to their tournaments and cheer them on. I don't know if I love that or hate that. Anytime you're an amateur and you have a fan club, it's, uh, it's, it, it must be pretty cool. Yeah, because I thought Sweet Pickle, I thought something else, but they are playing Not Tonight. That's right. So... Let's see how this one ends. And, and the folks over at Not Tonight, uh, you know, Larry is a former Navy SEAL, and as you can see, he is a, uh, an exceptional athlete and an excellent uh, pickleball player. Oh, and then we have a net drop, a little net love there again, and across, a little dinking, and then Larry with the tattoo. Beautiful play, beautiful play. As you can see, the flag in the background is blowing, blowing pretty hard. Yeah.
So Darlin Yuli on top team. Yuli's a big smasher. He's a big banger. He can really hit the ball. <laughs> Smash. And here's Eric with a good serve, good dig. Yuli's got a great backhand close to the net, close to the kitchen. So I appreciate the non-matching uniforms on these teams. This is this is really good. Not a single of the four people have anything matching. This uh you can tell these guys are pros. Yeah, it does look like they did a late late night Kmart run to pick up those t-shirts, but yeah. you know, it at least they're styling a little bit. You get you wear your oh, neon here. There's you. there's a surprise, an unforced error by Yuli. Well, he has his neon yellow shirt from his old uh kickball career. Tough serve there. The wind is definitely, this court is one of the more difficult courts with the wind. And Eric with a paddle push and out of bounds. So point to top team. Darla with the serve, textbook serve. Yuli with a good return. Good block by Eric, another nice block and a point by Yuli. Yuli does a great job of uh, really focusing on the feet, which is, is important is, in pickleball. Is that a common strategy to like aim for the feet to give him nowhere to, to hit? Exactly, exactly. Out of bounds. The name of the team is Two Big Dills. Yuli looks pretty intense. This is, uh, this is important. And he's uh, been practicing pretty hard. I see him down at the court every night. Darla with a good return. Oh, unforced error. Once again, that's a, that's a shot she makes nine times out of 10 and probably makes it in un, under five mile an hour win, not 50. So Gabe, we had an extremely competitive qualifying round. We had a couple surprises, but when we look at the final four, it really looks like those are the top four teams that played in the tournament. They are, the, actually they were my favorite teams to watch. They were the most fun to watch. I really do think it came down to the four most fun teams to watch. actually wasn't our creation. We have a friend who lost a daughter at a very young age in the prime of her life. And to kind of remind us that each day is a gift and to honor her memory, he's given us all these bands to put on our paddles. And it's a really great example of the pickleball community. You know, we get together, we're very competitive with each other, but we screw around a lot. <laughs> But at the end of the day, at the core, it's about relationships. So we're all part of Nazy Nation. So I was an athlete growing up, um, like softball, volleyball, track, and I played well into my 40s, and eventually, you know, I had a daughter, started raising her, and then it was all about her. And it's not like I'm gonna go to the Olympics anytime soon, you know, I'm not gonna dive for a ball in left field. I just watch myself get worse at a sport. So, blah, blah, blah. Um, later on, my daughter goes off to college, and I don't know if couples really realize this, but empty nesting is hard for everyone, and I get that. But I was kind of empty nesting on my own, and, oh God, 
That's weird. I was talking to my daughter just last night about it. It's like, she kept saying, Mom, you need a hobby, you need a hobby. And um, when I found pickleball, it, it, it just opened up a community of friends and it gave me a reason to wake up. And it made me a morning person because I was a casino industry my whole life and you're kind of a night person. So it's just been such a positive influence in my life. I played every day, every morning and <laughs> My husband seems to give that the reason as to why now we live in separate states. <laughs> he lives in Wisconsin, and I live in Las Vegas. He said I played pickle ball too much and didn't even want to deal with it anymore. So here we are. We He's live probably separately. jealous of me. Who knows? <laughs> he probably is, because we <laughs> hit it off. Hi, folks. Welcome back to the court. Today we have two of the local legends in pickleball, uh, Steve Cole and Aaron Franklin. Steve is the local pro. He is the uh, four-time national champion and five-time U.S. champion in pickleball. So one of the more important things in pickleball is the actual idea of drilling. So today we're going to take a few minutes with some of the local players to go through dinking. What exactly is dinking and how important is it in the game? Yes, it's very important. Dinking is how we construct a point uh, for keeping the ball low uh, so it's not as attackable from our opponents. And one of the key features of it is bending those knees, getting underneath the ball and not bending with your back and build the muscle memory to put these shots back into the kitchen. So pickleball really changed my life in an amazing way. Um, back in 2017, on uh, first one October, there was a concert going on with Jason Aldean. It was called the um, Route 91 uh, Harvest Festival. And so that night, I was actually a security supervisor. I was running all the security for that show. and. You know, we have the normal things, people trying to jump over a fence or sneak in alcohol or whatever stupid things, you know. You never expect that there was going to be a shooter on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay right above where 22,000 people are watching Jason Aldean sing and that he lays over 2,000 rounds in this crowd of 22,000 people. It's nighttime. Uh, you know, they turn out the lights to try and save people, so it's dark, and uh, you know, everyone's trying to escape. There was over 750 people who were injured that night. Over 450 people were shot, many of them multiple times, and unfortunately, 58 people perished that evening. And uh, I spent, from the minute that first shot rang out, I spent time running in, getting people, rescuing them, and bringing them out to triage. And you know, it, it's a uh, it's, it's a tough thing to even explain to people to understand something that horrific. It was a terrible, terrible experience as far as seeing that loss of life. I met some uh, amazing people and, uh, you know, in the end, one of my employees was shot and killed. He was a 19-year-old boy named Eric Silva, a wonderful man, and who had a bright future ahead of him. He was just about to be promoted within our organization. And two of my other employees were shot also. That gave me PTSD, and uh, as uh, the weeks went on, you know, you, you suddenly realize what's going on, and, and uh, it kind of settles in, but it was a rough time. I didn't want to go anywhere. Two years, I was a complete shut-in. I, I couldn't go to the movies, wouldn't go to grocery stores, stopped traveling, you know, the whole works. And I had put on a lot of weight. I wasn't healthy. I actually went in the hospital for three days, thought I was having a heart attack, and, and they said, oh no, it's just stress. I get out of the hospital, and a short time afterwards, my dog ran away from home. And I am, and this has been my service dog the whole time I'm going through my recovery. And I get a text message that says, hey, we have your dog. Come over and get your dog, right? So I go over to this house. They actually live across the street from me. And when I get there, I meet this very kind couple, Steve and um, his wife, Denise Cole, who happens to be the local pro here in Vegas. They're my neighbors. Mm -hmm. And when I pick up my dog, they go, hey, do, uh, do you play pickleball? And I was like, uh, okay. In my head, I'm thinking, these people are crazy. 
run away, right? But I'm like, oh, no, no, I'll just take my dog now and go, right? You know, but, and they're like, no, you should come out. Steve teaches for free on Saturdays at the plaza, you know? And I'm like, uh. So anyway, long story short, after ducking behind my car for like two months, every time I'd see him come out of their house, and I'm like, hey, hi, hi, it's, it's the pickle people, those weird people, you know? Um, I finally, they guilted me into it. I went to the plaza, took a lesson. I was hooked day one. That's it. I was done. And uh, I've lost 55 pounds. I feel amazing. No more issues, you know, with stress or anything related to that. I feel, I'm just so happy every day. And let me tell you what is one of my favorite things about pickleball. It's the camaraderie. It's the people you meet. It's a community that's like no other. Welcome back to the court. A visit to Las Vegas for the big deal wouldn't be complete without the king, Elvis himself. I'm all sugar ale, baby. Let's go, I'm ready for you. Elvis has been practicing, I'm ready, baby. Two words that really come to mind for me after all my coaching with Steve is, um, patience and placement it's not all about power when i started i've come from tennis it's all about power but just learning to be more patient and just placing the ball where there's some open spaces can win you the points so easily and not do dumb shots tells me what to do on the court <laughs> instead of in the kitchen and at home. And she says, hit to the guy, you know, do, do, don't do this, don't do that. And of course, the impeccable is really great. If I hit a shot and it's a winner, she says nothing. He's a god. If I hit the shot and it goes in the net, that was mine. I want a new partner. That was no. my ball. <laughs> Why'd you take my ball? You know, that's what happens every time, you know, <laughs> of course. No, but when we're done with the game, it's over. And she's coaching me all the time. Here, I introduced her, started before her, and she's telling me what to do constantly. But it's okay, you know, that's why we get along. And I, I go, I'm yes, smart yes, boss. In this relationship. You're right, okay. boss. <laughs> well, don't, don't forget, she could kill me with her bare hands. That's what they learn in Taekwondo, you know, like, <laughs> And then that's how it happens. That's, you, know? you know, it was funny. Speaking of that, I was uh, I did the national championships at Taekwondo, yeah. and that was a really long. It was tough, and yeah. I made it through the end. I got first place oh in God. forms, and I got first place in the that in was the sparring she fighting. Was in the finally against this bulldog, and I'm looking at her in her little tiny nose, thinking it's going to be smashed. She's got to fight against this. <sighs> she was big. She was taller she, than me. I mean, you she could smash her face and it wouldn't make a difference. She'd look the same. And he's like, please don't I was fight terrified. her. terrified. He's like, please don't fight her. I, I'll still love you. I'll be proud of you if you quit now. I oh said, no, I'm fighting God. her. I won. But that night, I still had it in the adrenaline going. And he was sleeping next to me. In the middle of the night, I, I all of a sudden turned around and went, ha, <laughs> right on his neck. <laughs> he's like, ah. <laughs> I feel so bad. Yeah. In your dreams, you're so literally really beating me up. Yeah, you know, it's funny because people always talk about, you know, how pickleball has saved them and, you know, bad times and pickleball brought them up. And I was always thinking, oh, you know, that's that's nice, you know, and then, that, and then all of a sudden, boom, I got hit hard. My father passed away the end of July and that hit me really hard. And then um, I came and I came to the audition here and uh, did that. And then a week ago, my sister died. And that just devastated me. And I, I just, two people, too close within two months is too soon, too, too much. And I said to him, I said, how am I gonna do this show? I, how am I supposed to pretend I'm happy? And when that first happened, he's like, come on, let's go play pickleball. You gotta go, I, I can't, I can't focus. I'm like in tears, I can't do anything. He goes, you need to go. And I just went out there and all of a sudden it's just, I get out to Durango actually and everybody's like, hey Suzanne, hey Suzanne, hugging me. And then we play and I'm like, God, you know, he's right. That really does pick you up. 
And and then I was worried about the show, of, apparently. And I'm like, how am I going to pretend I'm happy and this and that? But I walk in and everybody's so nice. And you just, that is that is the magic of pickleball. There is a power to it. And this has actually saved me and so many times because I have my highs and lows and it just, yeah, but this is definitely, this show has lifted me up. I'm so thankful for everybody here and playing, and it's just, it's been amazing. But this has been a really horrible year for me and devastating. Game format today is one game to 15, win by two. We're going to switch ends when the first team gets to eight points. So we have up match one, Nazy Nation versus the Ball Breakers. I'm really excited about this one. So beautiful day. The wind has calmed down. We're playing at a private court. So the conditions should be pristine for some great pickleball today, Correct. Gabe. And we have the Ball Breakers on the foreground and Nazy Nation uh, far away from us right now. Here we go. So James is serving. And we're off. Good serve, good return. Push back to the baseline. Nice. And out. So Tom is uh, pulling out his back. We might have a, an issue going on there. But uh, he's been very resilient throughout the tournament. He's played a bunch of matches in the last couple of days. So, oh, good play, James. So James let that one come out. And uh, that was a good call. Good, good, good way. Patience is a virtue in this game. Nice serve. Good return. Go for the drop. And once again, James playing with a uh, great blocking method. And Joanne is uh, definitely holding her own in this particular match. Comes James to serve. Here we go. Some good volley so far. Suzanne. Oh, and an unforced error. So, good point. Taking the serve back. Here comes Tom. Do you think the unforced errors will be the key to this game? Yes. And uh, both teams have done a good job throughout the tournament of not falling prey to, you know, pressuring shots or, uh, you, you know, trying to, to do things that they're, that's outside of their game. So, we should have a very competitive match here. So, the first couple points, back and forth, we have a pretty even match. And I think there's a little strategy discussion going on back there. Or maybe just uh, critiquing. We, we don't know in the case of the ball breakers. James with a good return. Tom, nice play, Suzanne. Oh, and out. But these two do seem to be very evenly matched. They are. They are. And there's Joanne with a good return. Oh, actually it was out. So pressing her paddle a little bit too far back. Tom's uh, getting his uh, thoughts together. Here comes the serve. James with the return. Nice. Oh, unforced error. Unforced. So once again, uh, that's commonplace in pickleball. And as you can see, the teams are used to it. There's no frustration. There's no yelling. I'd be cursing up a storm if that was me playing. <laughs> so oh, another unforced one. error. Uh oh, here we go. Starting to see a little bit of the anxiety coming out as we enter into the final round for the cherished, coveted golden paddle. Good return. Joanne, oh, and a tattoo by Tom. That one had the sting. Just aim for the feet. That seems to be the strategy, aim for the feet. Yeah, pickleball is a little bit of a foot fetish sport, I would say. So, uh, pickleball and... Uh, has something in common uh, with, uh, well, with me. There we go, scoring at the feet. So Gabe, we've got a very competitive match here and I haven't seen James yet take advantage of uh, his uh, kitchen play. Here's a dink and an unforced error. So tough shot by Joanne, but uh, those things happen when you get close to that. That's the reason why you do dink. Got it. So before all matches, what you'll see uh, is the referee will actually make sure everything's dimensionally correct and the net's at the right height, etc. Makes perfect sense. 
So here we go with Suzanne on the serve. Nice drop serve. Good return. Tom right into the kitchen. Yeah. With a pickle chip shot. That's right. That's patent pending, by the way. It's my turn. Okay, here we go. Suzanne continues to hold serve. Tom with a nice down the middle. If you're going to split the team, yeah. split the, the uh, other other team down the middle, it's a uh, beautiful awesome. strategy. It's a beautiful strategy. Okay, once again, Tom's really struggling. You might need to pump those uh, Reeboks up a little bit. James with a good return. And excellent, excellent point. All right, Suzanne still holds serve. So we're, we're getting into uh, points here. Oh, nice play by Tom and an unforced error. All right, we can tell that uh, Joanne wants to get this game going. So does Suzanne. Well, for those of you that can't tell, uh, there are literally tens and tens of people here today. So I think next time Tom's not going to leave his racket on the court, but actually might take it with him so he doesn't have to bend over and re-aggravate that back pain. Well, I saw his Ferrari uh, on the street, and it better, he better not scratch up my Nissan Altima is all I'm saying. Ooh, that's a tough point to lose there. So we got a server two, James. Good spin on that ball. Good return by Tom. Oh, and not enough mustard on that. So back over to the ball breakers and Suzanne with the serve. Oh, good job. Pushing, pushing Joanne back. Joanne comes to the front and just avoids the kitchen, but ends up faulting. So point to the ball breakers. James is checking time. I think he uh, might have a date tonight. <laughs> And nice. You see both teams coming to the net to try to get a good dinking session going. Oh, missed opportunity on the side of Joanne and the ball breakers. She had that point. Sometimes that anticipation of the ball, hitting the ball where you want it yeah. to go, don't always the excitement. Coincide. Yep. Oh, yep. I could tell. She, uh, and the frustration in her actions is once she, once she hit the ball. Okay, nice return. Tom. Oh, and Tom was Labrador in that ball and went out and tried to hit it. Good game. Or so as the uh, as the ball bounces, we have the ball breakers advancing. Give Tom some time to get his back back in shape. Well, he looks like he's oh, in pretty hey. good shape. So very competitive first match. We're on to match two between top team and the 60-something. So obviously we know a lot about top team. They're one of the favorites in the tournament. Uh, both Darla and Yuli are excellent players. And uh, a little bit about the 60-something. So the beauty about pickleball is there is uh, there's no issue with age. So as we look upon all of the players in our tournament, we had uh, from age 40 to age 76. So the 60-somethings are both in their 60s. And I've personally played them, Gabe, mm -hmm. and got my ass pickled, so. Well, you know, what I've been learning in, in the amount of time I've been learning about pickleball is there's no advantage. If, like, because I've, I'm noticing that there's teenagers, people in their 20s that are playing this. And just because you're in your 20s doesn't give you an advantage. It's a very, very evenly matched game. And that's something I'm really starting to fall in love with with this game, this, this pickleball thing. I, th I think you got something there, buddy. <laughs> so the, in the qualifying round, the 60-somethings were dominant. So they, they put down and went undefeated uh, all of their competitors. And as we move on, this is going to be a really good match. Darley and Yula complement each other in many ways. Uh, you know, Yuli's power game to Darla's, she's a great digger, ground stroker. Uh, she also uh, is uh, an excellent dinker at the net. So, um, and here you can see they're employing a strategy uh, of coverage. 
And there we go with Yuli's point right across. That was right tough. down the middle. You could see that Diane over on 60 something was not happy about that. So uh, she with uh, she holds that center line. And there's a good return by Vicky. Nice thought. Nice thought. Good return. There's Darla. So you can see that our friends at top team, they're center lining. They're trying to push those two apart yeah. and you know gain an advantage down the middle. I see that. Here comes Darla with the serve. Excellent return. Darla goes to the other side. Oh, Vicky with a nice hit. Nice block. And good back right. and forth, as you can see. Good volley uh -huh. on both sides. And uh, you could see that uh, Yuli came back with a strong tattoo. So, uh, you know, Gabe, there's a term we call getting pickled. What does that mean, John? That is when you basically shut out your opponent from any points. So if they continue on this march uh, and our friends over at 60-somethings don't score a point, they're getting pickled. Now, was, is that the ultimate show of dominance in this game, or is there something even higher than there getting is, pickled? There is a term called golden pickle. A golden pickle. And oh. that's when the, uh, the, per the person with the initial serve never gives it up and scores all 11 points. Wow. So uh, good effort there by, Vic, uh, by uh, uh, Vicky on that return. Darla's up. Darla's been doing a great job of keeping the ball right in play. Good return. Yuli. Nice. Lob shot. Oh, tough, tough. Good point from top team. Good play by Yuli. Very smart. Pull, pulled our 60-somethings up to the kitchen and then dropped it over uh, Vic, uh, Diane's head. Vicky with a nice return. Nice placement. Here we go with another lob. Nice dig by Darla. Oh, uh, center line smash. Top right team down the strategy middle. appears to be working very well today against the 60 somethings. You can see the level of frustration growing. Uh, you can see the hand on the hip by Vicky. She looks like she wants to go kick some ass. Oh, fault Ooh. by Yuli. A, a rare faux pas by top team. We'll need that to point, point that out to Yuli post match. Yeah. It's the only thing we can bring up to him so far. <laughs> Darla with a good serve. Good return. Vicky with a nice dink. Here we go. We've got a little dinking action. Good volley. Oh, and now they've got the serve. So. She lines up at the baseline. Drop serve. Good return, pushes Diane back to the baseline. Yuli takes his time, another center line. And nice volley here. Nice dig, good ground strokes by both teams. So that's a nice, uh, nice act of sportsmanship by Diane to go over and uh, Tell the, tell the guys the top team that was a great point. Or excuse me, uh, great volley. Nice dig. And this is part of uh, Vicky's game. She's an uh, excellent lobber. And even though a lot of lobbing, nice play by uh, you uh, turning his shoulder on that. Gorgeous. So Gabe, we've had a lot of great volleys uh, in the last few points, so uh, and there's another point by Yuli. Beautiful so, placement. So, John, let me ask you this. What do you think is going on in the 60-somethings' minds right now as far as a strategy? Well, having been there and not scored uh, any points, uh, uh, nine points into the match, uh, I think they're just trying to score a point, a single point, so they don't get the dreaded pickled. Yeah. So, and it looks like they got pickled. So... A uh, lot of love there. Uh, you know, obviously, we, the Las Vegas pickleball community is very tight, and everybody knows each other, and we play each other all the time. So, 
Uh, nice moment, but tough match for the 60-somethings yeah. getting pickled. To be pickled in the semifinals as well, That's uh, that's got to be heartbreaking. Yeah, and I know the ladies t- took it personally, so but they'll see him back on the court at some point. So as we move on to the championship uh, batch, uh, it was a tough, tough showing by our 60-somethings. That was hard. The fact that they, uh, they got pickled is, uh, it's really tough. They're one of my favorites coming into the I'm tournament. I'm sorry, buddy. Did you have money on this game? We are it in sure Vegas. feels like it right now. I, I get it. I get it. I totally understand. Yeah, so uh, my name is Eric Barella, first of all. Um, I started pickleball like eight months ago. I, uh, I really got into it to kind of like get some more exercise. Um, you know how my situation is, my life story. So I was into yoga and meditation and I wanted more physical uh, exertion. I have evolved through the casino business. Uh, I have a restaurant now. Um, five years ago, I got shot in October 1st. Um, so I got into like meditation and yoga after mm-hmm. that. And pickleball helped me get into the more physical, because um, it was through the Achilles, right. and it got into the more uh, physical uh, uh, exercise. All right, so uh, in Las Vegas, Nevada, in 2017, five years ago, I got shot. I was at a country music festival, um, and I was enjoying my night uh, over across from Mandalay Bay. There was a beautiful festival going on for three days. It was my day, my birthday the day before, so uh, I was celebrating, and I was having a good time. Right when Jason Aldean went on, this country singer, basically uh, at the end of the night, he was the main act. And um, everybody's been waiting for him for three days. Uh, Maybe a couple of songs in, uh, we just started hearing some like crackling um, in the audience. And you basically heard um, uh, fireworks. Well, you thought there were fireworks, right? So basically, uh, I was standing there and then the shooter starts shooting. And we kind of look around, where is he coming from? Where is he coming from? You don't know where it's coming. And he happened to be up in a building. And then the shots went right by our head. The original, one of the original shots. And a bullet sounds a certain way when it goes by your head. And that's when we decided to run. And uh, I was probably 20 steps into it. And then it felt like a sledgehammer hit the back of my Achilles. It shot right through my Achilles. And... uh, I stayed laying down for a while, and as I'm laying there, there's just bodies falling. And I was laying there, and my phone was ringing. And then I pick it up, and it's my daughter in Reno. And I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not answering, because there's screaming and crying and bloody screams. I was like, ah, I don't want her to hear that, you know what I mean? So I kind of like ignored it, ignored it, and calls would come in every second from all three daughters. And... uh I waited until it was quiet, and then I, I think it was in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. I said, listen, listen to my voice. I am alive. I am fine. And they're crying hysterically. And I said, I am fine. Promise me, promise me, promise me. I was like, listen to your dad's voice. I'm alive. And uh, that was tough. Th- those three calls were the toughest calls out of the whole thing. Like, my mom and dad were hard, my brother, my sisters, but the three daughters, man, they couldn't talk. They were just crying, man. It was horrible. You know what? I would, I would love to uh, be a part of the pick. Believe it or not, pickleball is the future. Um, being an athlete, an ex-athlete, playing every sport since you were, I was four years old, I played every sport. I did wrestling, boxing, baseball, basketball, football, um, every sport. Pickleball is the healthiest. It won't hurt your knees. It won't hurt your back. You can play it till you're 90 years old. Like it's, and everybody's level. Everybody's um, consistent. Um, And the people you meet are the best. So I would love to still be involved in pickleball any way I can. I would, would, man, I'm the ambassador for pickleball. I really am. I seriously, if I can say one thing real quick, meaning you guys and meaning everything, see how we like pickleball brought us together. Totally. You know what I mean? We would never have met. Yeah. We're going to continue to play pickleball together, even when you're in town or out of town, whatever. You know what I mean? It's pickleball. Totally. Pickleball is it. Yeah. Yeah. Pickleball is a vibe. So after three days of intense competition, we're down to the final match. So exciting. I'm so excited about this final match. 
Well, we've got the top team versus the ball breakers, two very different styles, but very good athletes that have really, in my, my eyes, uh, mastered def very different parts of the game. Do you feel any team has a better advantage over the other team, Tom? This all comes down to, you know, Tom's injury. So, you know, Tom's a top player when he's fully healthy, but based on what we've seen uh, on the court before uh, the game, he's been struggling a little bit with his back injury. He, he has been hobbling around, and, and we, we watched it firsthand. He's been hobbling around, so hopefully this is going to come down to all the heart. You know, who has the biggest heart and who's that's what's going to come out on top here, in my opinion. And Yuli and Darla look like they're at the top of their game, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see in the next... Uh, uh, 20 minutes, I'm how things happy. turn out. And we're all going to find out together. I can't wait. So the tension is palatable here at the court. We've got two very competitive teams that are all in for the golden paddle. So we should see a very competitive match. And once again, uh, Tom's injury is going to play a big role here. Uh, he looks like he's moving a little bit better. He might have taken a couple of uh, uh, ibuprofens before the match. And, you know, that tells you about the commitment of pickleball players. Yeah, if, if you're willing to make an ibuprofen commitment, that is commitment to the sport. So we're just going through some of the rules as uh, we get to the finals. Don, the referee, is uh, pointing out some some quick uh, quick adjustments to the court. Well, let me and run this by you, John. Does, does the size of the racket matter in this particular match? So, Gabe, those are fighting words. So in pickleball... It's a paddle, not a racket. Apologies, John. Apologies. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm you're, you're teaching me so much, but I apologize if I still mess, mess the occasional that's, term up, buddy. That's okay. But uh, we, we, we're not stringers. We're uh, stri strictly paddles. Uh, does that mean I'm not invited to the buffet after this? <laughs> <laughs> so good serve by Tom. Darla comes in. Oh, with a little net love. Again, good center line hit. And by Suzanne. So that's a great start for our friends over at Top Team. Tom's resetting. And here comes a serve by Yuli. Yuli's got a really strong serve. Oh, wow. Wow, that was an incredible shot. So a little little dipper over the net. And as Tom is paying his homage to the net gods, <laughs> we're back at it here with Yuli on the serve. Another beautiful serve. Good. Oh, unforced error there on the, the, the side of our... Definitely uh, feel these little unforced errors. The tension's, right. the tension's really high and, you know, the anxiety level. So the M4 stars, we might see a little bit more of that here in the championship game. Okay. But they're starting off strong. They both uh, have a lot of energy. All right. So we have Suzanne serving. Excuse me, Darla serving. Good job. Tom plays it back. It looks like he's moving okay, a little bit tentative. Oh, and Yuli goes in for the kamikaze tattoo. And uh, that's not gonna happen. Tom got nutmegged on that last one. Looks like he's all right, yep, there he is. He's a little shaky, but- uh, He's getting, looking good. Yep, good serve. Great ball placement by Yuli. Oh, a little drop shot. Oh, Darla with a good uh, block, nice. Good point. Tom with the serve. Oh boy, you don't see ha that happen too often. That is uh, uncommon there. Here comes Suzanne with the serve. Drop serve, Yuli with the return. Nice, nice third shot, nice third drop shot by Tom and a little bit of a loving for the net. We've seen a bunch of net balls, which uh, in pickleball, that's a sign of a good player. If you can get a little net love during a game, that know, you know your spaces. Oh, beautiful shot. Yuli with great placement. Perfect. That's a big part of his game. Very calm, good footwork, walks the court well. Excellent player. So far, evenly matched. Good serve. Tom with the backhand. Another good backhand block. Darla, beautiful. And oh. Tom with the unforced error. I think he was overthinking that shot. But uh, Darla, just uh, great, great play there. Big mistake on that one. Yeah, yeah, that's got, that might cost him in the long run. Okay, we got Yuli serving. 
Wow, right down the center line, good return. Oh boy. Uh-oh. Oh boy, that was uh. probably the point of the tournament right there. Just nailing it down that sideline and, uh, you know, Tom is one of the best players out there. Just couldn't get to it. You can see he's a little stiff. Yeah, the injury is really uh, oh. activating there. We got a ball call. We got a line call here. Ref says it was in. Here we go. Oh, another good hit by Yuli. It looks like Tom's uh, flexibility is uh, really restricted at this point. Good back and forth here. Oh, and a tattoo ball. So, once again, Tom paying homage to the net gods. You're definitely feeling the frustration. Uh, Darla on Tom's is side. Darla's pretty excited. She, I think, she can smell blood in the water, and she's uh, she's had a couple good points here, a couple great ground strokes. And uh, you saw an interesting strategy as they moved back to the baseline to try to play a little bit more. Frustrations a lot coming of frustration out. Frustration coming out yep. there. Yep. Tom might be talking a little bit of trash right now. Darla with a good serve. Good return by Suzanne. Oh, a four star by Yuli. Nice. I feel the, uh, the ibuprofen's wearing off. Here we go. Tom with a nice serve right down the center. Oh, Suzanne doesn't miss many shots like that. She's uh, very good at uh, the two-hand return, two-hand back right hand return. We've you, seen that in her game all tournament. Do you think fatigue's a factor at this point, John? Definitely. Definitely. I think there's a, oh, another great shot by Yuli. Nothing she could do with that. Serve back to top team. And at this point, I think top team can smell the blood in the water. And they might be doing, uh, that was definitely out. They might be trying to pick on Tom at this point, yeah. knowing that he has a, a significant injury. He's definitely become the target. I saw him just grab his shoulder. I hope that's, that's okay. Here we go with Darla's serve. Nice return by Suzanne. Oh, and Yuli with the lob. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Caught Tom going the wrong way. Nice play by Yuli. Just made him freeze. He's got incredible patience with the ball in the air. And he's got great reflexes. So that bodes well for pickleball players. Here comes Darla with the serve. Tom with another excellent return. More oh. net love. Oh. With a pickle chip shot. Oh, and now, yep, Suzanne's getting a little upset. Done. Uh, we're going to take a timeout here. So I've been uh, reading in my notes here that, uh, that Suzanne's pretty competitive there. What do you know about that, John? Intensely competitive. Uh, so I've watched... Uh, uh, both Tom and Suzanne play on multiple occasions, and uh, she's she comes from a tennis background, and obviously you can tell she's a superior athlete. So here's Tom doing a couple of his stretching exercises. Sure looks like he can, oh, now he's taunting oh. Darla. Oh, yeah, here we go. There's Tom trying to get, uh, you know, under their uh, under their skin. Just wonder Still if this has been enacted in this, this entire time. <laughs> There's never been any ibuprofen. Or maybe it was something a little bit stronger than ibuprofen. Uh, that's, that's what I would go for, buddy. Okay, we're getting down to uh, the final points of the match. They're a little lopsided right now, a top team really dominating the play. Been a couple great points. Okay, here we go. And an unforced error. We don't see Suzanne do that too often. So, like, definitely you can tell that uh, Suzanne's definitely frustrated. Frustrated for sure. Oh, boy. So, that ball was out. Yep, it was out. So, we got, uh, we go, we go back to Tom serve. The ball breakers are really struggling on creating any kind of volley. Uh, good serve by Tom down the line. 
and nice by Yuli. Here's where Yuli excel, excels right there with a the drop shot. So Just beautiful. A pickle chip shot. I'm not going to say anything, but I might have seen a foot in that kitchen by Yuli, but uh, we can go back and replay in a, in a few minutes. That's not our place to say, buddy. That's what the ref is there for. That's right. That's right. Nice Darla shot. Nice Yuli shot. Suzanne, nice. Oh, nothing Tom could do with that. Nice. Nice play right there. Textbook, textbook ball placement. You can see a uh, little bit of uh, dejectedness on the side of uh, the ball breakers. Absolutely. And Tom, oh, good dig, good Jeez, ground stroke. That was great. Tom takes advantage of that lob and pumps it back into the side of top team for the point, for the score. Okay. Yuli's got a big smile on his face. You know, when Yuli's smiling, he smells that victory coming. Hey John, do you think that any is there anything the ball breakers can do to to dig themselves out of this hole? Well, I think there's maybe one or two things, maybe pulling the fire alarm or uh <laughs> actually having, you know, some surgery on the side for Tom. Ah. Yeah. So, but at this point, it looks like uh the chicken dance is the only thing that the uh, ball breakers have going That's for it. them. Yeah, I see it. Well, at least Tom's in good spirits. He's a he's a hyper competitive guy. And uh, he takes his he takes his game seriously, and and you know both Suzanne and Tom drill constantly, as do uh, Darla and Yuli. Tom doesn't miss those shots, so that's a bit of a surprise there on that unforced error. They're keeping it together though. This is still a fun match. Though. It is it's very competitive. Good volleys. Darla pushes back to the back line, and wow, Yuli, Ooh. Yuli with the unforced uh, error. Rare mistake. Yep, rare mistake. And you can see Tom showing and demonstrating his enthusiasm over that point. Really, be really believing in the team. <laughs> so we've got Tom serving to Darla, and in this case, uh, we got a little confusion on. Player placement. We're going to walk through that. Don might interject here in a second. I mean, pickleball is about the rules. You follow the rules, you'll have a lot of fun. There's not many rules. So pretty simple game to learn. And uh, what, what is the process here when, when they switch servers? Is it just one person and then the opposite? There's, there's nobody that serves multiple times in, in one sitting? So you, if you consistently score points, you will hold the serve. Got it. When you lose, lose a, 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 uh, you'll lose a serve and, it, and you do play, you both have the opportunity to uh, serve the ball um, with the exception being the initial, oh, and there's a blast by Yuli right down the right middle. Right down the middle. Nothing you can do about that. So when you, when you see Tom and, and Suzanne, who are both really good athletes uh, with excellent footwork, not, not be able to make the move to the center line yeah. to get that ball, you can tell it's just been blasted. Oh, tough shot. Tough shot. Was that in? That was in. Nice play, Yuli. So we haven't had any tough calls today. That looked like it was uh, right on the line. But uh, once again, our, uh, our ref, Don, was all over it. Here comes Darla's serve. Oh, beautiful return by Tom. Pushing Darla back to the baseline, and, and Darla goes stand. long. Out. That is out of here. All right. So it looks like our friends over at Ball Breakers are taking a second to think through what they want to do. But at this point, I really don't see, based on the game that they're playing, how they're going to be able to come back on another beautiful drop shot by Yuli as he waves to the crowd. Uh, he's a performer at heart. Truly is. He's a three to four hour pickleball player a day, every day. Really gets his exercise in, huh? He does. All right. Now you can see the uh, game faces go on for a top team as they are thinking about that golden paddle on Down their the shelf. Middle. And here we go. Looking for a ball. Blood in the water. 
Really sizes up Tom. Oh, and he hits a long one. Too much excitement on that ball. Here comes Darla. Good serve. Good return by Suzanne. Really smart return, pushing Yuli over oh, and oh, wow. taking the serve back. Did not expect that. No. No, great, great return by Suzanne, pushing Yuli over. He wasn't expecting it and then complicating his return on the second ball. Okay, a little confusion on which side we're on here. Getting that sorted out. Tom looks like he's moving a little bit more better than he was before. Not as gingerly. Oh, nice shot by uh -huh. Tom. Good blast. Not sure if he's talking trash right now, but uh, Darla seems to be shaking her head. Well, I had an optimism oh. on that side. Tom's, Tom's definitely taunting Yuli. And Yuli, oh, there we go. Takes a, oh, nice play. Nice play by both Yuli and Suzanne. Good hustle by Suzanne to go over and get that ground ball. And we can see that uh, there's a little bit of uh, uh, excitement over on top team is they're, uh, they're thinking about where they're gonna put that golden paddle. Oh, and Tom is not, oh, wow. Good point. Tom is not gonna go down quietly here. So you can see he's hunching over. He's a little bit, uh, He's, he's hurting, you can tell. Another great serve. And what, we got a break in the action here? What happened there? Um, I think we're out of position. Which, uh, once again, in pickleball rules, uh, you, 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 know, you only have a couple of them, three of them to really follow. And in this case, uh, serve position is definitely one of them that you need to keep track of. Don's having a quick conversation with the ball breakers, just walking through the points, counting the points out. Typical of, a, of an excellent referee uh, to share with the team and just discuss the um, points to make sure that we're all in the same position. The outcome of that discussion was that they were in the correct positions and, uh, you know, Don, Don acknowledged. So we're moving on here. We've got uh, Tom serving. Another great serve. Great part of his game. Yuli does a little poaching. Nice score. Toughest balls are those kitchen balls to both hit and, and uh, block. So, and we can see Tom's getting a little frustrated over there. He's got his toes on the line. Darla with the serve. Suzanne, good job pushing Darla back. Nice play. Good dig by Darla. Oh, oh. beautiful. And an unforced error. So back to Yuli. This is where Yuli really excels in serve game and ball placement. Good save by Darla. A lob by Yuli. And that ball is out. Got a little bit of a momentum shift here. Uh, hopefully the uh, the guys over at uh, top team weren't counting their chickens before they hatched. Another point for the ball breakers. Right down, Suzanne, and was that ball in or out? What's the call? We might need to go back to replay on that one, I Gabe. think so. I really, uh, I couldn't tell. We are going to... Tom's explaining the dimensions of the court, so everybody is aware of that. And Darla with the outside, uh, don't think she was trying to do anything clever there. It just was a miss hit. Nice, oh, tough, tough ball on the net. Yeah, that's tough. That's been the story of the game, though. Uh, just a lot of unforced errors on Team Ball Breaker. Nice return. Oh, boy. 
Wow. So Yuli gets a lot of net love on that one. There's nothing really you can do about that. Good hit. Just popped over Suzanne's rack. Uh, now you got me saying it. Paddle. Cat. Rack cat. That's not what I heard. Okay. And there's Yuli with a little poaching. And Tom with a good return. And a beautiful drop shot. Oh! Oh! And what do we have there? It was out. So nice try. That was a good volley back and forth. So here we are. We're back uh, to Yuli serving. Oh, beautiful serve. Push, pushes Suzanne back right down the middle. Tough ball. Darla with a good center line smash. And Tom can't dig that one out. So beautiful game. Uh -huh. Game match, point, set, tournament, team, top team. So great, great finale. Two great teams. Spectacular. Uh, and, the, and the, you know, the final uh, point there was sort of a, a summary of what had happened that whole match, which was uh, just great ball placement on the, on the uh, side of top team. The pickleball champions of Golden Paddle. So I'm going to head down to the court for some interviews. Uh, we'll see folks in a few. I'm going to the buffet. Hi folks, we just completed the gold medal match down at the court. We have a big announcement to make. For our 2022 Big Deal Challenge, Vegas edition, congratulations to our top team, the yes. top team, Darla and Yuli. Thank awesome. you, thank you. Thank you guys, All thanks right. for bringing us on this Great journey. job, great top job. Top team.